we are almost there. Okay, we've got five more weeks left, and I need to just explain some of the nuts and bolts of the next five weeks so that you've got the most information possible to help you self-regulate and get the best out of the next five weeks, especially in terms of the flow, in terms of when you have an exam, when you don't, and riding those crested ways. This is the first time you've been through formal GCSEs. Us and the rest of the staff, we've been through it for 17 years, 15 years, 10 years, whatever, so it's a little bit easier for us, but for you it's difficult, okay, so I appreciate that. First job is this week, okay, there are some end of manner events that start happening this week. The first thing is staff versus um, student sports fixtures, so I know we've got some rounders on today, um, we've got some football on Friday, we've obviously got the dress up day on Friday. Um, it's obviously something that's very kind of fun for Manor. Please make sure that those dress-up uniforms, those dress-up costumes that you have at school are appropriate, please. Because um, we don't want to kind of end our kind of formal time at Manor on a, on, a, on a sour note. And also the hoodies will start to arrive either today or tomorrow. Okay, so that's this week. Then next week, next Monday, this time next week, we'll have registered and we'll now be sat in the high. Okay, we'll be sat in the high, ready to go into our first exam, our RS exam, the Christianity and Islam exam. Everything is set up exactly like we did for the mops. Okay, so day by day, you come in in the morning, you register, bell goes, your form tutor will then walk you across to the high, you come into the high, and on your way across, you have a little look at your exam timetable to work out which row to sit in. Okay? You'll walk down and you'll sit in that exact row. You'll have all your equipment with you for each of your exams. A couple of things that we just kind of dropped off a little bit that we can't afford to do for the real thing next, one, next Monday. Number one, see-through pencil cases are a requirement or something that is basically not blocking an invigilator's view of what's inside your pencil case. Number two is water bottles. They must be see-through and clear. So a water bottle that's kind of cloudy or a different colour isn't allowed, okay? Think along the lines of a disposable water bottle but with the label removed. That's kind of along the lines of what the water you're allowed in. Obviously no mobile phones or watches. We are now getting to the end whereby if you were to be caught with a mobile phone on you, then I, I, I really don't want to go down that route, okay? It's happened once or twice in the mocks, and I just explained to those people where it did affect them, the processes and the steps that I would have to go through. I would just become completely clinical. I would just have to follow the procedures that are set out by JCQ and just investigate, collect all the evidence and send it off to the exam board. Okay, and then they would make the decision. It's out of my hands, okay? But please, let's make sure we don't fall into any kind of traps in terms of remembering things. On the morning for next Monday, you are in P2, or if you're in one of the smaller rooms, you just go there straight away after you've got your morning mark and the invigilators will look after you there, okay? Now, as we go through those four weeks, we'll have two weeks before we break up and then two weeks, two weeks pretty much after, it starts to go in peaks and troughs and you'll start to notice that you'll have a run of exams where you feel like you've got an exam and exam and exam and then a day where you might have a day off. And that can be quite difficult for you as a 16 year old to regulate what to do and how to make best use of that time. Okay? Year 11 stand down day, that is the day whereby you only then have to come in for your exams, is Thursday the 17th of June. So we'll all be in, attending school as normal, up to and including Wednesday the 16th of June. We have biology in the morning of that day and then DT in the afternoon. Then after that day, that's the tipping point. That's the tipping point whereby we have lots of long gaps in between exams for many of you that then become really difficult to do in a formalised environment such as school. So for example, after that biology exam and DT exam, I know that a lot of people that then don't have an exam until the following Monday. So we only ask you to come in for your exams on days or revision sessions when you've got an exam or revision session. Now, my revision website is the place to go to find out all these things. If you haven't been on it, please do use it because it collates everything you need to know in one place. The subjects are at the top, so if I just go down to one that I know a little bit about. 
and what that say, for example, combined science, taking you through this before, whereby everything that you need to know in terms of the changes and what comes up in the exam is there. The topic by topic revision that you would click on is just down there in red. Okay, it'll take you to the exact page of BBC GCSE revision site where then you can then revise, for example, the bio, what comes up on biology. Okay, what comes up. Okay, now if I just click back so I can get back onto my revision website. Okay, two further tabs have been added at the top. The first one is the summer timetable, and that just gives you a global view of which exam is happening when. Now, the exam boards, back in September when they were designing this, scheduled 10 days apart in case COVID rules were still in force, whereby you had to isolate for 10 days. Obviously, that's disappeared, okay? But the exam timetable still exists. So let's use RS as an example. Can you see how RS... 16th of May, and RS, the afternoon, is a full 10 days apart, okay? So that is why our exam period is slightly longer than the normal one, okay? So this gives you a global view of what's happening when. You've got your own personalised copies of this on Edulink, and also your paper copies of them, okay? About where you sit, which seat number, etc. And you'll see that for quite a lot of this, it's literally just one exam a day, morning, by RS, Biology, English, History, Maths. Some of you might have a day, for example, Thursday 19th of May, where you don't have an exam on, okay? You'll have five periods in that time whereby you'll be doing your own vision within school, okay? So it's not as difficult as the mocks. We have overtrained you, okay? What sometimes happens when you're training for a marathon is you do all your really difficult work in the middle of your training session and then you taper towards the end so that you are in the perfect kind of physical condition to attack that marathon. We've done the same thing for you. We've made the mocks more difficult than the real thing in terms of uh, kind of having 10 days of two exams a day. So that in the real thing, if you do have two exams in a day, it's quite easy because you've been trained that way, okay? So it's longer, you are in a really good position where you've been trained really well in November and also in March. Okay, so that's how we run through to May. And as I mentioned, when you get, and when we get, I should say, to the half-term holiday, after we come back, you've got a pretty much a full-on week where there are some cases where you do have kind of an exam in the morning and a, another one in the afternoon, Tuesday the 7th of June strike, uh, springs out to me. And then you can see that down the kind of third week, it starts to be a little bit more kind of displaced and a little bit more loose, okay? So we are gonna have to try and work on our self-regulation and understanding that it's gonna go in peaks and troughs in terms of intensity, in terms of workload, etc until we get ourselves to the end of Wednesday the 15th of June, and then we're coming in, in terms of just for our exams and our revision sessions. Now, from next week, what also happens is that we'll also be doing extra revision sessions, and it gives you up here a tab that says week by week. Okay, so have a little read of that. And then it will show you a week by week timetable of what happens when. Okay, so I've tried to lay out for you as simply as possible what's happening when and where you should go at what time. So for example, if we click Monday the 16th of May, in pink it shows you when there's an exam. So we've got our, uh, our RS exam in the morning. And then on the left hand side, it's a bit tricky to see right from the back, you can have a look on the website when you get away from here. It, it says X half and Y half and it says normal lesson. Crucially, those normal lessons aren't automatic revision lessons or self-study revision lessons, okay? The reason for that is if you have a little look, although especially on the top, you'll notice that you have an exam every morning, which means the lessons that you have, periods one and two, for pretty much all through the exam period get hit. Because all the core exams seem to be in the morning, RS and biology and English language, for example, so, for example, option D subjects, what you have on a Wednesday morning, your double period is always taken out. So your teachers 
if they get a chance to see you, are probably going to want to do some revision for their subject. This is the only change from the mocks. Because in the mocks, we allowed you, if, the, if you had a mock exam in that subject, to do some stealth study revision. Whereas now, coursework element is gone from the 16th. We've done all the coursework. That's all been sent off and moderated. Okay? Now it's just purely about the exams. So from my point of view as a French teacher, I'm going to be wanting to do some revision with my students on French in the lessons because otherwise it's going to be too difficult for you just to try and always try and do your self-study and your private study on your own because it won't be as effective or efficient. Okay? So there'll be no kind of allow it to be for you automatically to have self-study during this time. Your teachers will be guiding you. You'll be on a subject-by-subject -subject basis. So you've got to understand that. For some of us, that will be really useful because you might have added, it, say, for example, an English language on that Wednesday. You might have English period four on a Wednesday. And your teacher then might say to you, right, it, I'm not going to get very much out of you in terms of English today, so I want you to view this as a private study lesson. That's absolutely fine. We come up to our, my website, we click on the top, and we do some revision for the exam that's coming up the following day. As it so happens, in the afternoon, we've got some history revision going on anyway because there's a history exam on that Thursday. Okay? If there is any changes to your normal timetable, they'll always be flagged in yellow. And to keep this kind of nice and simple, I've just kind of flagged it on the timetable in pink and yellow there. So for example, on that first day in the afternoon there's a computing revision session that's extra. That's going to run in the Archbishop Street with Mrs. Walker, okay, just because you've got the 12 students who do computing, you've got a computing exam in the afternoon and it feels right to go and see your teacher for any kind of last minute revision help and kind of guidance immediately before the exam. You'll see that we've tried to slot that in into period three. Same thing happens for psychology on the Tuesday. Same thing happens for drama for an extra revision session on the Thursday. Now I've kept this quite clean so it doesn't overload you. But if you were to just scroll slightly back to the top of it, you'll see there's a link that's displayed there. I don't know if you can quite read it, but it says exact document is here. And when you click on that exact document, it'll get taken to a kind of like a Excel spreadsheet that will have at the bottom any changes to the room. So if you look at that P revision, it's just a normal room, so there's nothing going on. If you spot it, just across here on the Thursday, we've got, on the Thursday morning, some extra RS lessons going on on the Thursday morning. The reason for that, as I've mentioned before, is your RS lessons really get hit by these exams being in the morning. So some people, won't have had an RS lesson since their paper one. And to then go straight into paper two, that can kind of, kind of upset a few people. So we want to lay on an extra revision session for you. So if you're in the X half, you would have RS revision, hopefully with your teacher, okay? Rather than just being left to your own devices. So for that, all you would do is go down here, and it's really difficult to see from the back, so don't worry about the detail of it but you just get to see where you should go. You, as year 11, it's dead simple, you just go to your normal teacher's room and they'll look after you. But other students, like the re-rooming, the reorganizing that I'm gonna to have to do, it kind of like tells them where to go and it tells our staff where we should be sending you, okay? So please, if you can, use this revision website as your go-to place for any updates and anything, okay? Other last little tips from me. During the exams, stop revising at 9 p.m. Give yourself a 12-hour break. The reason for that, I went through it myself when I was 16. I tried to keep on revising 10 o'clock, and there was something for one particular exam where I had to learn something by heart. And at quarter past 10, I couldn't do it, and I broke down because I'd just been so convinced that I needed to know this, and it just it set me off, and I couldn't get to sleep in it. It disturbed my sleep pattern. If you really, really are worried about your exam the following day, get up earlier the morning after when you're fresher. Stop revising at 9 p.m., okay? Other thing to do as well is to try and make sure we keep ourselves hydrated and we look after our bodies, because it is gonna be quite a long period that we have to get ourselves through. 
Mrs. Stevens and Mr. Rabbit just got to pass on a couple of messages as well. So I'll hand over to Mrs. Stevens and Mr. Rabbit. Hoodies!